Welcome guys for a full video tutorial on how to make a strongman log. First you draw a straight line on the log used as a reference and try to get one surface or one face very straight, 90 degree as much as you can. This will be used for all the reference measurement and to put the uh, end plate. Here I'm using a grinder and a planner to get the surface straight as much as I can. And I use a wood board to make sure it's almost 90 degree and flat. After that I had to measure from that surface and cut the log but it was too heavy. And thanks for the Timberland guys for the help. Now here I'm marking the cut line for the handle box. Going same from the top reference line we drew the first one. I found that it's easy to use the steel flexible ruler and the soft measuring tape. As we say uh, measure 10 times and cut once this is a very expensive piece of wood. And uh, make sure you draw all the box line, the uh, center line for the handles. This is the jig I built for the chainsaw to get the same angle for the sides. Uh, using the chainsaw you start cutting, it will be much easier if you have another person helping on the other side so you can see the level of the chainsaw. Here I had to keep uh, going back and forth to make sure I reach the level where I need to stop. And you will see from this angle as well. You have to stop a little bit above the line. Once you're done, you have to cut the vertical line and then you give it a small hammer, tap, it will come off. The cut line will look like so. Once you're done, it's time to cut the middle pieces. We cut them in a small ribs around one centimeter thick and they become easy to knock them off. Just hammer them with the hammer and uh, using a chisel and a grinder you work your way to clean all the surface and get it ready for the handle box. Once you have the flat surface ready you draw your uh, handle box in the center. I have these cut pieces of wood the same size of the length and width of the handle box. It will make your life much easier when you're cutting the box. Here I start uh, marking all the outer line of the box with a chisel. I like to go down at least deep 1 cm to 2 cm so you know you have your edges right. Take your time in this process and be precise as much as you can. It will help you in the next phase of uh, aligning and straightening the handle box wall so the steel handle goes in smooth. Here I'm using a wood flat bit with a drill to you remove the most of the handle box material. It will look something like that and with a chisel you work your way around to remove all the excess material. And as well you align the edges with the chisel. Always measure your depth when you're cutting and take into account the pointy tip of the flat bit. It is very handy as well to have a blower to remove all the wood cut pieces. Here I'm explaining for the guys in the shop about the handle and the log and what's happening. Now once you reach your desired depth of the handle box you switch to a frostner bit which have a little bit smaller tip on the front so you can align all the floor of the handle box and you go very side by side drill so you can get the surface flat as much as you can it will look something like that using a chisel and a grinder work your way around to straighten the box walls always using the uh, cut pieces of wood we have for the exact length and width of the box this will make your uh, steel handle goes in smoothly. Take your time in this part and uh, make sure you're grinding evenly on uh, all the four sides so your box is still in the middle of the lines. As well make sure your walls are straight and uh, perpendicular 90 degree. Once you're satisfied with the box, it's time to polish the inside using a sander and a grinder. Make sure you sand all the surfaces, the internal surfaces, and there's nothing sharp. So when the athletes put their hands in, they don't scratch their hands or their fingers. Now here I move to sanding uh, the outside surface of the box. Now take extra care to sand and round the face near the end. This is where actually the athletes forearm rest when they're cleaning the log. 
After we finish from the first box, I like to realign and readjust the log horizontally and vertically. So this way when you're cutting the second box, you know it's somehow in the same plane of the first box and your log is symmetrical. We repeat the same process for the second box. Go mark your uh, the border with a chisel. Go down at least one centimeter and uh, using a uh, flat bit, remove most of the material from the box. Make sure you drill your holes as close as you can together. It will make your life easier when you're removing the remaining parts inside. Same process using the chisel. Knock off all the uh, internal material and with the grinder and the sander, you clean the box. Once all the cutting is done, I weigh the log again. It was 115 kilo as expected. Now it was time to fill all the cracks with the resin and fiberglass. Reason being is I needed to drill the hole for the pipes and I needed the center and it was in the crack. So here I'm mixing the resin with some fiberglass for reinforcement and adding the hardener afterwards at the end. After mixing it you start pouring in the crack slowly and keep an eye watching for any leaks. If there's any leak, you stop, let the resin and epoxy dry, and then add more afterwards. Once all the crack is filled, sand the surface back again, and now it's time to find the center for that surface. Easiest way I find is to cut a cardboard, the same almost uh, diameter of the surface. Try to align all the edges as much as you can. Once you're satisfied, punch the center hole with a small nail. And align the drill jig with that hole. I'm using a Frostner bit type here to drill the hole for the end plate pipe. Having blower is always handy as well in these kind of a jobs. And this is how you pick up a 115 kilo log. Next phase is the marking the stencil and get ready for the engraving. After you align the stencil, I found the easiest way is to use something very sharp and uh, poke the letters like so. When you remove the paper, you can see the stencil on the wood and with a pencil you can mark it again so you know where to engrave. Now all the lines are marked, it's time to uh, cut the outlines of the letters. I'm using a chisel here to cut all the lines and mark them. After that I'm using a very sharp 6mm chisel to cut the interior. I'm going only around 1-2mm to two millimeter deep only as this will be filled with paint. I found easier to cut the edges first and then work in the center and remove the center part. This way the depth will be uh, almost equal. Just for reference, I think the letters were 5 cm high and the width was around 1 cm for the letters. Now for the smaller font, uh, I'm using a router with the wood cutting bit. I found it easier to get the small detail. Now after the metal work, uh, everything was fitted in place, all the handles left and right on the center line exactly where we drew them the first time, even the end plates were fitted left and right so they form the same shape of the log. And here is why it's very important to have the end face of the log very straight and flat so the steel plate actually sits nice and flat and the pipe will go 90 degree. When all the welding is done, make sure everything is grinded down to smooth especially the handles where the athletes put their hands last phase for the metal work is uh, getting sandblasted before the powder coating this way you make sure that the powder coating will last for a long time once the metal work is received from the powder coating shop it's time to fit it in place here i'm uh, fitting the handles in the exact center of the log Measuring from the top of the log to the top of the handle pipe, this way you ensure that your handle exactly in the center. Once you're happy with the alignment, mark all your holes with the pencil. Using anything sharp, here I'm using a flat bit, mark the center of the hole. This will be easier to drill the hole afterwards and align the drill bit. Here I'm using a 90 degree adapter to drill the hole inside the box for the coach screw. Now it's time to fit the end plates, here I had to make some adjustments to make them fit. Usually after the metal is fully welded it will uh, shrink a little bit, so I had to grind the edges a little bit. As well making sure all the alignment is correct with the logo, the laser cut and the engraving. Once all it's done, now it's time to move to the second last step in getting the log ready, which is uh, filling the engravement with paint. 
I'm using a, a very precision uh, brush here and oil based paint black color take your time here because I'm left handed so I go from the right to the left and uh, make sure you don't drip any paint on the log because it will be very hard to remove it now move on to the last and final step we give the log a very good sanding and it's time to put the top coat I'm using first a uh, sanding sealer we mix it with the thinner and for top coat I'm using the uh, clear coat from the car automotive it's 98% clear with hardener here I'm applying generous amount of uh, sanding sealer uh, this is a fresh wood cut I'm using a 3 inch paint brush I found it's easier to reach all the corners and fill all the cracks and the holes in the wood in between each coat uh, we're sanding I'm sanding the log with the 220 grit I'm working up to 220 grit and uh, I like to flip the log uh, upside down between each coat I think total I did uh, 4 coats with sanding sealer and this is the final result after the sanding sealer now it's time to uh, put the top coat here I'm mixing the top coat always follow the manufacturer mixing ratio this one was uh, 2 to 1 so 2 parts uh, PU 1 part hardener and I'm reducing it with 30% uh, thinner and I'm gonna spray it with a spray gun to have a nicer finish on the log in total I think I did around 6 coats or until I finished the whole liter of the top coat I went for around 30 minutes or until the first coat dries and then apply the second one this is what the log looks like with the final wet coat I left it for 48 hours so the top coat fully cure and now the log is ready for the final step which is installing the handles, the end plates and the rope starting with the handles as we have all the holes pre-drilled from before it's just a matter of aligning them I'm using a coach screw with uh, some liquid nails and I like to add washers this way I know how much I'm tightening the screw I like as well to put all the screws first in and then I tighten them at the end this way I make sure if I need to, if I need to do some adjustments I can as well for the side screw make sure the hole is under the handle under the center of the handle this way you can reach it with the ratchet and you can put it in move on to fixing the end plates make sure you hammer it all the way in until the steel plate touches the uh, face of the log here I'm have to pre-drill the holes for the 3 8 5 inch long coach screw same using liquid nails and a flat washer to know how much you need to tighten the screws you don't want to over tighten the screws as this is going along the fiber of the wood as this log is designed to go for world record I added this ring for the end plate and this way the screws are going perpendicular to the wood fiber and it will hold it in place and here we repeat the process for the second side making sure you hammer and tap the end plate all the way until it touches the log on to the last step adding the manila rope before cutting it make sure you tape both ends I like to use Gorilla Tape it will stop the rope from fraying to keep the log balanced make sure you cut both ropes the same length here also repeat the same process tie both ends before you cut the rope last step of getting the rope ready is whipping the end this will give it a nice look and will stop the rope from fraying last step is installing the rope on the log and make sure it is fixed in mirror way to the other end to keep the log balanced I'm using a 6 inch nails and I had to pre-drill the holes so I can drive them in and I'm bending them using a uh, S-type double ring spanner and make sure to pull the rope as much as you can to remove the slack before hammering the nails this will make sure your rope is the same on both sides and this is the final product hope you guys enjoyed this video and it was helpful 
Please like, share and subscribe to see some more similar content and thanks for watching.